but he's in danger. He know too much. One thing you got to realize is you, he probably have a conversation right now with the higher ups and everybody else to figure out how it's going to work itself out. So it's the return of the Titans. Suge Knight is back speaking. Jaguar Wright is back speaking. And it's always free Palestine all day, every day, point blank, period. Hey guys, it's Marab Maradi. Hopefully you guys are all doing well today. Back in again with another video. If you have not subscribed, click that button, guys. It is daily and consistent content. Comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up and let's get straight into this mess. It's gonna be a long video, guys. I was just watching this Jaguar Wright interview. Great interview, it's gone absolutely viral, but also an interview with Suge Knight has just been released 12 hours ago that is also going viral. So we're gonna get into both of them, break them down and get into this video. So please do subscribe, comment down below, everything you need to know about these two important videos, interviews, very long interviews in just under 20 minutes. Before we get into that, free Palestine all day, every day, every single day I'm seeing dead children everywhere. And the fact that everybody cares about Taylor Swift's new album when we have ground invasions going on is absolutely insane. What the Israelis are doing is directly connected to what they're doing to the Palestinians, what they're doing to those in Congo, and they're also training with the racist police in America to kill black and brown people on the streets. It is all connected. Big shout out to the people you know at Columbia University in New York standing up for injustice because it is all connected. We are all connected, point blank period. Well, all due respect to Puffy, you gotta realize one thing. He didn't start off like that. I'm quite sure somebody taught him that, and that's more got deep it. in the industry. These guys who got involved with a lot of people who they mentors, instead of having a guy to mentor your own father, they just have these guys they mentor. And when that happens in the industry, they, it was done to them, they do to the next person. So I felt that Puffy was a regular, normal guy. And then when he started hanging with the guys in the industry, they did things to him. And then allegedly, he did things to Usher. It goes on and on. Now, let's get into this where Suge Knight is back and he's on a very long interview, just under two hours, but he mentions PDD, he mentions Usher, Bieber, and higher up executives and just basically exposes a lot of the system, which he's been doing in these interviews that he has on his own podcast, so he, he trickles it down. Suge Knight says that PDD was taught how to operate um, and you know groom people through three main people that he drops. At the end of the day, it was like this. When you have, uh... The universe is one big company. Doug Morris is the man at the time. Jimmy Iovine's here. If Doug Morris, me. But Puffy was able to go to the same umbrella and go to Jimmy and get just much a check, uh, uh, even bigger check that Doug gave him, even though I have not recouped. One is Clive Davis, as we know, and recently it was discussed how Clive Davis, you know, apparently organized the federal raids allegedly via the Homeland Security. It was a setup, it was staged, it was etc. But he also mentions Jimmy Iovine. This is not the first time Suge Knight is mentioning Jimmy Iovine, another executive producer. But he also mentions Doug Morris. Doug Morris is an American record ex executive. All of these executives with a higher up, you know, power right at the top. These are the ones allegedly who are beginning all of this stuff, starting this stuff, grooming people, training Diddy to do X, Y, Z, and you know, basically passing it down. And he says that Diddy didn't start off like that. Somebody taught him this. Um, guys got involved with people who was their mentors. And when they got in the industry, what was done to them, then they had to do to the next person. Suge Knight states that what Diddy has, you know, happened to him via, you know, other executives like Doug allegedly, or, you know, Clive, as we know, who's close to him. He allegedly did these things to Usher and Bieber. Now we've seen the videos, we've discussed it, we've spoken about it. Don't need to go into what we think it is. We already know. But for the fact that Suge Knight, somebody else in the industry is also stating that that's what he believes, in my opinion, guys, speaks absolute volumes. Look to my right and there's a kid, a kid standing there drinking champagne. Oh, no. And I couldn't help but wonder who the hell let their child come into this club, stand in the VIP section, and drink champagne. I mean, guzzling champagne out the bottle. Ed Lover said that it was only after Usher's album dropped that he realized that the child with P. Diddy at the club guzzling champagne in the VIP section was Usher. Now he's having 48 hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, 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 the you know, where we hanging out and what we doing, um, we, we can't really disclose, but um, 
It's definitely a 15 year old's dream. He says the industry was actually built in these very odd secret rooms and that you had to participate in these secret rooms and those who don't later on get burnt. The people who do participate in the secret rooms continue to grow and be successful. Even when they're caught, they're not really caught. It's about exploiting them, using them for money and that, you know, using them for access. I can molest your body and do whatever I want because you want X, Y, Z from me. I am exploiting you. If I am exploiting you, it is not consensual anyways. But even if it is consensual, that is not the issue. The issue is the exploitation, which has gone over a lot of people's heads because this is a mental game. So it goes on to state that P. Diddy is untouchable and protected. Suge Knight says Diddy's life is now in danger. He knows too much. He knows all their secrets. Clive Davis and some of these music executives that taught maybe somebody like a Diddy and others, is Diddy at a level of being untouchable where he's protected or is Diddy a target that they'll eventually put all the blame on him and make sure they get away with it free. But he's in danger. He know too much. One thing you gotta realize is you, he probably having a conversation right now with the higher ups and everybody else to figure out how it's gonna work itself out. So he definitely is gonna be the black mother effer gonna be left holding the bag. You gotta realize one thing, that boy's life is dangerous. It's not just dangerous for the things he was doing, but he's in danger, he knows too much. He's probably having a conversation right now with the higher ups and everyone to figure out how it's gonna work itself out because he knows all the secrets. And if he gets to running his mouth, it could be a bad look. So Diddy could be killed. Epstein is basically what he's implying that he might know too much, which is why those raids took place because there's tapes and cameras and all these parties going on. So for Suge Knight to come out with this interview, I think is, you know, groundbreaking. I feel like he said some of this stuff before or we've heard some of this stuff before, but there are still people speaking out. Suge Knight returning in this viral interview is very interesting. He talks about Tupac and so much more. So definitely recommend you guys to watch it. It will be in the bio below. Both of these interviews will be credited, but I think, and sourced, but I think the, the stuff that he's mentioning about Usher and Bieber and these secret rooms is, in, is to me scary. Now, what I think is going on in these secret rooms, I don't think it's, you know, are wording and you know non-consensual or consensual sex with grown men. What I think old men are doing are finding very young human beings, I'm gonna put it like that and you guys know what I mean, and do absolutely insane stuff to them to the point where they then kill them. And you know, they could defecate on them, they are word them, they urinate on them, and then they absolutely kill them. And then I wouldn't be surprised if they then use their body upon their body as the form of ritual sacrifice and that you need to do things like this. This is my inclination and that, you know, they drink the blood, some, some stuff, some crazy stuff like this is what I would assume and that you would need to pass down that stuff. And when you do stuff like this and you're trained and groomed to do stuff like this at a very young age, you then can also become hypersexualized, which allows you to then continue to want to do it to other people and harm them and etc. That is what I think is going on in these secret rooms. So if you've done some of the stuff and there comes a point in time where you get publicly exposed, which nobody can control in the world of social media, you can still be protected by, by the higher ups. An example is Jimmy Iovine. He also faced his own SA lawsuits, but he's absolutely fine. He's absolutely untouchable. Nothing's happened to him. The man is, you know, as if living as if it's nothing's gone wrong. So I feel like what's happening to Diddy is because he definitely displeased a lot of people, tried to do things his own way, got too powerful for his boots. And now of course they're beating him down. Everything happens for a reason. The raids are happening for a reason. That's just the way I see it. Suge Knight coming forward to me, I'm not surprised because this isn't the first time that I've reviewed him discussing Diddy, but I think that this is the most that he's ever said in regards to Diddy and for the fact that secret rooms are, you know, going on. Jaguar Wright returns as well, and she states a lot of stuff. Um, but if I explain how I knew Cassie was gonna come forward, that could hurt some people. Um, which is why the last time I sat on this blue couch, I said what I said. Congratulations, young Miami. Run as fast as Cassie did. She started, we're gonna get right into this. I'm glad that she's back. I'm glad that she's doing this interview. I'm glad that it's going viral. I'm glad that she's able to say, look, I told you so because a lot of people were not listening to her. When this first interview went viral, everybody was discussing it and calling her crazy when everything took place, especially when she highlighted that all the people at Bad Boy Records either fell into a coma or died or were very ill and Kim Porter, et cetera. 
connect the dots, guys. She states that she knew that Cassie was going to drop the lawsuit the last time she was there. Says Diddy didn't settle because of his ego. Says that, you know, she has mutuals. Says the feds didn't know whose home they were going to be raiding until they saw Diddy's kids. Says this was done so they couldn't tip him off. She explained what Tusi is. Obviously, Tusi is pink cocaine and that, you know, people use this in the cocktails as we've seen in the lawsuits. She says, doesn't understand why JT allows Young Miami to go off the deep end, calls Young Miami a punisher when it comes to Diddy's bees. She says that Nicki Minaj leaked the alleged audio of Diddy and Meek. I thought the audio was fake, so I can't speak on that. Says Young Jock spoke the truth, as we all know, but then he retracted it out of fear. He gave a shout out to Wendy Williams for trying to expose Diddy in the 90s and also confirmed what Gene Deal said about Usher landing in the hospital. Says Diddy and crew tore him up and she should be ashamed he brought Justin to Diddy. Says Dwayne Wade is a fruity pebble like Honey Combs. Says Jay-Z was behind Aaliyah's death because she rejected him. Says Jay-Z has been backstabbing friends and taking over their lives. Says D Diddy's downfall is actually connected to Jay-Z. Says Jay-Z beats up Beyonce and possibly keeps her drugged up. Talks about Cowboy Carter. Says it sounds like a trap with a holster and a cowboy hat. Thinks Beyonce should have remade Stand By Your Man because she knows who he is. Very interesting in regards to Jay-Z. Then there are other parts cut off of the interview where it states that, you know, she stated that Jay-Z was sleeping with Rihanna when Rihanna was a minor and that, you know, they had passed things on to Chris Brown in terms of STDs. Chris found out and then of course, you know, blew up on Rihanna at Clive's house, which she stated before previously in stuff that has gone viral. So that is the gist of, you know, her interview and Sugar's Night's nice interview. I wanted to get that out to you all the cliff notes that I was writing down, watching both, and you know, really just getting into it and reading people's commentaries. This is what both Suge Knight and Jaguar Wright are saying. One thing about these two, they have, you know, returned coincidentally at the same time, which I think is great because it puts a lot more pressure on Diddy and these interviews are going viral. So if they're gonna keep speaking on this, so should we. And you know, we should be reviewing the content and pushing it up because everybody is discussing it. She's made wild, strong allegations in regards to Jay-Z and now it's connected to Diddy and his downfall and etc. But she hasn't been wrong in my eyes when discussing Diddy beforehand. So who knows at this point, guys, who knows? But they're both very intense, jaw-breaking interviews. I would definitely recommend watching both of them in your own spare time in the bio below. Sugar Knight saying there's secret rooms. So Sugar Knight saying that he feels, allegedly he said, you can't say it's fact because there's no proof out there publicly that this was going on with Usher, this was going on with Bieber. Jaguar Wright saying that Usher got torn up by Diddy. Wouldn't be surprising to me because in court documents, he blew up Kid Cudi's car, lest we forget, back in November. Let's connect the dots, guys. So, you know, they've come out with some explosive claims and details, shockingly berated Diddy and exposing him completely. And only yesterday, there were pictures of him where he looked really upset and sad as he had more phone calls. This is not the end for Diddy, but I think that things are going to take place. I don't know which way it's going to go. I honestly don't know. It's so unpredictable, guys. Um, I honestly don't know. But make of this what you will. Check out these interviews. It will be sourced and credited in my bio below if you guys wish to. But this one thing about the Diddy conversation, it is not letting up because now the Kardashians are being dragged into it with the online stratosphere, especially on the app X. Everybody is discussing it. And I don't think Christiana would appreciate whether it's right or wrong. Um, that millions and millions of people are reading these Twitter posts in regards to allegations of her and Diddy. Subscribe, comment down below. That Kris Jenner is a witch. I'm so sorry, I had to end this video with that. I just feel like something about her just seems odd. Something in the buttermilk is not clean when it comes to, I don't know what it is. It's just the way she just, I don't know. It just seems weird. Subscribe, comment down below and give this video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. It's just one click to subscribe. I'm filming this for you guys at 3.30 in the morning in London and it's cold so I'm wearing my jacket. But please do subscribe, comment down below, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget that, you know, this is a very important conversation because we are discussing the protection of the young, the protection of the younger generation below us and how if we are conscious of manipulation and exploitation at this level, that we can be conscious for our younger generation. Do not take this information as gossip. Do not take this information as fodder and nothingness and for you to wake up and forget it. Be conscious of how you can protect the young, protect the younger generation of boys and girls and how if we're hearing these things happen to people like Bieber, Usher, allegedly in these secret rooms or whatever, in the Hollywood music industry, it can happen in any industry. It probably is happening in every industry and that we should be conscious. If you've got a daughter and she comes back with a brand new iPhone gift, uh, your first question should be, who the F is buying you gifts? 
and how can they afford that? They must be older. What is going on? Let's in, let's you know your constant protection should be your, of your children, your your brothers, sisters, daughters, sons, etc. So this is what this conversation is about when it comes for me. That when we take this all in in any way we want to, we just become more conscious of protecting the young. Subscribe, comment down below, give this video a thumbs up. I feel like I already said that. I don't even know. I'm so tired. But anyways, it's just one click to subscribe. Click the notifications bar as well. And I will catch you guys soon for another video.